Hi everybody, welcome to Christ the King Sunday, which is always the Sunday before the first Sunday in Advent. And this year has gone really fast, but really slow at the same time, hasn't it? First of all, I want to share with you an illustration. Now, I am no gardener by any stretch of the imagination, but I was once listening to the radio and it was a gardening program and somebody phoned up to speak to the gardening expert. And he was asking why the trees in his garden, which were all the same type of tree, lost their leaves at different times. And I thought to myself, well, that's quite an interesting question to ask. So I listened to the answer. And the phrase that the gardening expert came out with was, it's down to seasonal variation. Seasonal variation. The fact that even though they're the same, they will respond in their own time to the seasons. Now, this time last year, Prince Andrew got himself into quite a bit of a media storm, and that I don't think has ended. And Jeremy Corbyn said this when asked about the royal family. He said, it needs improvement. Now, whatever your, your view, whether you're an ardent royalist or quite the opposite, that's quite a cutting thing to say, isn't it? About anything or anybody. Today, we're thinking about Christ, our King. Our King, Jesus Christ, who certainly needs no improvement. And how we respond to this title, Christ the King, can sometimes be a bit like the seasonal variations of the trees. At what point have you accepted Jesus Christ as your King, as your Saviour? Let's think a little bit about it, shall we? Let's go into a little bit more detail. And before I do this, I want to give you another illustration. This um, story, is about somebody who was blind. He was born blind. And as such, he lived his life and lived his wife very, his, his life very effectively. But then there was an operation which could be done to his eyes, which would restore his sight. So he had this operation and his sight was restored. But all of a sudden, even though he could see, there was a disconnect between seeing and actually knowing what to do with the things that were in front of him. For example, think of a, a can opener. He had to close his eyes to know what to do because when he saw a can opener, he wasn't sure what to do with it unless he closed his eyes to feel. And I thought that was a really, really fascinating thing. Although his sight was recovered, no longer did he actually know what was in front of him. He had to close his eyes and feel so that he could see through his fingers. So he had to re acclimatize his whole kind of way of learning. He had to re educate himself. And it was in the re education that his life was changed. And I think for us as well, there is something about needing to close our eyes and sense the power of Christ Jesus. We might see things around us. We might see Christ as, a, as an image on a painting. We might see Christ as a baby, often a plastic or a porcelain one. We might see Christ as a figure on a crucifix. And that's all seeing. However, sometimes we've got to close our eyes and re-educate ourselves. And there are variations in how we do this. And when we realise that Christ Jesus is in fact our King. So I guess what I want to say today is that lots of people know Jesus by name. Um, he's a prophet, for example, in Islam. He's often the part played by a plastic doll in nativities, is that figure on a necklace. But once you see him and sense him as your king, 
it changes absolutely everything. We need to re-educate and re-acclimatise ourselves to this. Because once you see Jesus as more than a baby, once you see Jesus as more than a figure in a nativity scene, once you see Jesus as more than something on a piece of jewellery, when you see him as king of kings, it changes your life. Now, the titles of Christ and king are not used together in the gospel, but Christ itself is a royal title. It means the anointed one or the anointed king. Now, in the Greek text, the Christ is explicitly identified as king several times. So in Matthew 2, verse 2, it says, where is the newborn king of the Jews? In John 18, Pilate refers to the implication that the Christ is a royal title by inquiring quite explicitly if Jesus claims to be the king of the Jews. And similarly, in um, John 1, 49, a follower addresses Jesus as the king of Israel. Now, outside of the Gospels, the first epistle to Timothy, that's Timothy 6, 14 and 15, this explicitly uses the phrase king of kings and lord of lords. And that's actually taken from Deuteronomy 10, verse 17. So once you see Jesus as more than a baby, more than a figure on a cross, more than a, a shepherd of his people, more than a friend, as more, once you see him as king, everything changes. I'd like to um, close today by just reading these words. At my lowest, God is my hope. At my darkest, God is my light. At my weakest, God is my strength. At my saddest, God is my comforter. In my heart, Jesus is king. So may you uh, enjoy your day and I just pray that you can sense Jesus Christ as more and more and more as king of the world, king of the universe and king of our lives. So take care everybody, God bless and have a really good day.